In this video we created a project with the latest version of Spring Boot, we are using Spring Boot 3.1.3. Furthermore, we are using the Spring Authorization Server. Two Spring Resource Servers. A Spring Cloud Gateway to make all the application work together nicely. And an Angular application that makes the results visible in a browser window. We launch the video with the result in a browser window. We can open the project with 127.0.0.1 port 8090, this is the port number of the Spring Cloud Gateway application. It is also very important to open the project with 127.0.0.1 and not with localhost. This has to do with the session cookies, the domain of the Spring Authorization Server and Spring Cloud Gateway should not be the same. The first thing we do is log in with a username and password. We use user and password as login credentials. After a successful login we can press the three buttons and get the expected result of the two resource servers and the user info. We can now go to Eclipse to go over all the code. We start an eclipse by going over the structure of this new project. We have one Spring Authorization Server, taking care of the login. One Spring Cloud Gateway, that makes everything work together nicely. And two Spring Resource Servers, that provide us with the necessary data. We also have an Angular app that makes all the Resource Server data visible but we are creating that in Visual Studio code and we'll talk more about it later. The first app is the Spring Authorization Server with the following POM file. Spring Boot Starter 3.1.3 Java version 17 and its dependencies Spring Boot Starter OAuth 2 Authorization Server Spring Boot Starter Time Leaf and the Spring Boot Starter Test that we don't use here. We have a standard Spring Boot main class. In the application YAML file, we configure the port 9000 on which the server is running and the application name. We do most of the work with the configuration in the Security Config class with the configuration annotation. First we have two security filter chain beans with all default configuration. The only custom configuration is form login, we use a custom login screen here. The web security customizer bean we need to make all the files we use for the login screen accessible. In the in-memory user details manager bean we configure the users with the password and authorities. In the registered client repository we configure the client. Pay special attention to the redirect URL and the logout URL. We use 127.0.0.1 here and not localhost. We use the JWK source bean along with generate RSA key and the JWT decoder bean to create a new set of security keys each time the server is started. The authorization server settings bean is a default configuration. The last bean is the OAuth2 token customizer here we customize the access token and the ID token with the roles of the users. In the ID token we also integrate a custom message that we make visible in the Angular app as user info. The last block of code in the Spring Authorization Server is the custom login screen. The login controller creates the reference to the login HTML file. The login HTML file is a one void page with a form to login and the necessary error handling. The last file is the style CSS file to make the login page pretty. The next piece are the two Spring Resource Servers. 
The code of both apps is the same, only the text returned by the controllers is slightly modified. And the port number on which the server is running. Spring Resource Server 1 runs on port 8091 and the second server on port 8092. The Palm XML has the dependencies. Spring Boot Starter OAuth 2 Resource Server and Spring Boot Starter Web. The main class is also default here. The configuration of a Spring Resource Server is much simpler than the authorization server. We have one security filter chain bean. Here we make all authenticated and configure the address of the Spring authorization server. The data we make available in the home controller, the difference between the two Spring resource server is in the text we make available. In the application YAML file, we have the port, the name, and the address of the issuer or Spring authorization server. The next block is the Spring Cloud Gateway app. The POM XML file. With Spring Boot 3.1.3 and Java version 17. And the 2022.0.4 version of Spring Cloud. Spring Boot Starter OAuth 2 client and the Spring Cloud Starter Gateway Dependencies. A standard main class. To configure a Spring Cloud Gateway app we have two choices, yes you can do it in an application YAML file or in Java code. Here we chose the application YAML file option. Server port 8090. Application name. Default filter. Token Relay is used to convert the access token from the Spring Authorization Server to a session cookie for the Angular app. Furthermore, we have three routes. Route 1 is for Resource Server 1. Route 2 is for Resource Server 2. And Route 3 is for the Angular app. The last part of the configuration is the Spring OAuth 2 client part to connect to the Spring Authorization Server. The Security Config class has one security filter chain and has the configuration of the OAuth 2 login and the OAuth 2 client. The last class is the User Info Controller class with the ME endpoint. Here we extract the user info from the ID token and return the info as a user DTO record. This was all for the Spring Boot code, all that remains is the Angular app. We are going to go over the Angular app code briefly, covering only the most important things. In the app component HTML we have the HTML code, the text and buttons of the main page. The app component TS file has the JavaScript code for the buttons. Button 1 for the Spring Resource Server 1. Button 2 for the Spring Resource Server 2. Login to login through the Spring Authorization Server. And the user info buttons to show the user info. This was it for this video. Thanks for following until the end and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.